Want to get up and running with NumPy super fast? Well, you've come to the right place. My name is Nicholas Renault, and in this video, I'm going to be taking you through a crash course on NumPy. You'll be able to take away these skills and use them to build deep learning models with TensorFlow, work with pandas, and even get up and running with machine learning. Let's take a deeper look as to what we're going to be going through. So if you've never worked with NumPy before, basically it's a Python library that allows you to work with arrays of all different shapes and sizes. It has support for n-dimensional arrays, so you could have an array within an array within an array within an array. And this is particularly useful when you're working with deep learning libraries like TensorFlow or Keras or PyTorch, and it also helps you a lot whenever you're performing data science with pandas or if you're building machine learning models. So in terms of what we're going to be covering, we'll take a look at how we can install NumPy using the pip install command. We'll then take a look at the CRUD framework for NumPy. So basically that's going to cover creating, reading, updating, and deleting NumPy arrays. And then last but not least, we're going to be taking a look at how we can export NumPy arrays so that you can save your work down and work with it later on. Ready to get to it? Let's do it. Alrighty, so in this video, we're gonna cover the four key things you need to know about NumPy. We're gonna take a look at how you can create NumPy arrays, how you can read and work with them, how you can make updates to them and perform mathematical functions. And last but not least, we're gonna take a look at how we can delete and export those NumPy arrays. Now, the first thing that we need to do is actually install NumPy and import it into our Jupyter Notebook. So we're gonna be working inside of Jupyter and coding with Python because NumPy is a Python library. So let's go on ahead and first up install it using the pip install command. Okay, so in order to do that, what we've done is we've used the exclamation mark and then typed in pip install NumPy. And you can see here that I've already got it installed, but if you're installing it for the first time, it might take a little bit longer, but it will go through all the steps you need in order to install NumPy. Now what we can do is import it into our notebook. Perfect, so that's done. So it's pretty common practice to import NumPy as NP whenever you're working with a Jupyter Notebook or doing data science. That's just pretty common practice. So in order to import NumPy, what we've done is we've imported NumPy as NP. Now what we can do is actually go through the process of creating some NumPy arrays. So the whole concept or principle around NumPy is the ability to work with n-dimensional arrays. So that might be an array stacked inside of another array stacked inside of another array. An array is really just a, a list that looks something like this. So you might have a, a bunch of numbers. If we want a two-dimensional array, then we're just gonna have two arrays within another array. Sort of something that looks a little bit like that. Now, in this case, we've got a number of NumPy functions that help us make arrays. So let's take a look at some of those functions. So specifically, we're gonna take a look at the np.random.rand function, which will allow us to create random arrays. We'll look at np.zeros, np.full, as well as how to create a custom array. Okay, so what we've done there is we've created four different types of NumPy arrays. So our first NumPy array that we've created is a randomly generated array. So specifically, we've created an array with a random set of numbers in the shape of two, three, four, but we'll cover the shape a little bit later. So if we actually take a look at that array, you can see that we've got a whole bunch of random numbers. We've got three different arrays, which each have four numbers in them. And then we've got two larger arrays up here. But you can see that it's all got random numbers. The second array that we've created is done using the np.zeros method. And this basically allows us to create an array which is full of zeros. So if we take a look at data, we can see that that's got a whole bunch of random numbers. But if we take a look at zeros, you can see that that's just got zero values in there. Likewise, if we take a look at full, it's sort of similar to our np.zeros function, except in this case, we are replacing the zeros with the number seven. So rather than having zeros, we're gonna have seven. So if we take a look at the full array, you can see there's got a bunch of sevens in it. And the last function that we used was np.ones. So this basically works similar to zeros and similar to full, except this time it's replacing the values with one. So if we take a look at that, you can see that we've just gone and created three different types of arrays. So random gives us random values, zeros gives us zeros, full gives us a specific number that we pass, in this case we did seven, and ones fills our array with ones. Now what happens if we wanted to create an array with our own numbers? Well, what we can actually do is use the numpy.array method. So this is gonna allow us to take a regular array or a list and convert it into a numpy array. So let's try that out.
And there you go. So now what we've done is we've used the np.array method to go and create our own custom array. So you can see here that we've actually gone and generated our own array. And if we take a look at the type, you can see that it's now a NumPy array. So that basically goes through all the steps to create an array. So we can build a random array, one filled with zeros, one filled with our own number, one filled with zeros, and we can also generate our custom arrays. Now let's take a look at all the things that we need to do whenever we're reading our arrays. So there's a couple of key attributes within each of your NumPy arrays that allow you to get information about what you've actually got on hand. So let's take a look at those. Okay, so what we've done there is we've grabbed three different attributes. So first up, we've grabbed the shape. So if we take a look at that, you can see that we're actually getting the shape of the array there. Now we've done this on our data array, which we created up here. So it was a random array with the shape two, three, four. And you can see that we're accessing that shape back down here as well. Now we can also take a look at the size, which in this case gives us the number of values that we've got within our array. And we can also take a look at the types of data that we've got in there. So in this case, we've got everything as a float. Now say we actually wanted to work with the different values that we've got in our array. Well, what we can actually do is slice and traverse through our NumPy array. All right, so we've done a couple of different types of slicing there. So the first method that we've just used there is going to get our first instance of data within our array. Now, keep in mind that our data object had the shape of two, two, four. So, oh, sorry, two, three, four. So that basically means that it's gonna grab our first array of three values. So if we take a look at our ARR variable, you can see that we've got our first array and in that is three arrays of four values, which is effectively this little part here. So the three and the four. Now, if we go one step further, we can use a slicer to grab multiple values. So in this case, we've actually grabbed both the first and the second because we've gone and specified everything there. But if we actually change that and grabbed our, just our first two, you can see that we've now gone into our first array and we've only grabbed the first two arrays within that. So this allows us to slice within our different NumPy arrays. Now we can also grab the last value by using a negative. So in this case, rather than grabbing our first array, we're grabbing our last one. And you can see that within our reverse line here. And again, that's grabbing our last array. And again, if we wanted to grab a single value, well then we can traverse our array. So in this case, we're grabbing the first value within our larger array, the first value within that, and then the first value within that. So if we take a look, we're grabbing a single value. And if we take a look at our bigger data frame, we're grabbing this value right there. And that's really what you need to know in terms of reading. So basically you can grab a bunch of attributes and you can also slice through your different NumPy arrays to get the values that you need. Now there's going to be a whole heap of functions that we cover within our update section. But first up, let's create two arrays that we can use to actually use some of these functions on. So again, we're going to use the np.random.rand function to create these two lists. Okay, so we've created two variables there, so list one and list two. And again, we've used the np.random.rand functions to create arrays of 10 values. So if we take a look at list one, you can see that it's got 10 values. And again, list two, that's got 10 values as well. Now there's a number of basic math functions built into NumPy. So if that allows you to add, subtract, multiply, divide, and also perform a dot multiplication. So let's take a look at those first. So there's a fair few different math functions there, but the basic premise is that we've got add, subtract, divide, multiply, and dot. And the advantage of using these on a NumPy array is that they are super fast and that they work on NumPy arrays. So if we take a look at our first one, so again, we've used np.add to add list one and list two together. So we can take a look at that. And we've also used np.subtract to subtract them. We've used np divide and np multiply to divide and multiply respectively. So if we take a look at div, again, we've divided one by the other and multiply, we've multiplied one by the other. And the last function that we've got there is np dot dot. So this allows us to create a dot product. So basically multiplies every value together and then aggregates the result. So again, that's our dot product. 
Now there's also a whole bunch of statistical functions built into NumPy, so let's take a look at those. Now there's a really easy way to remember each one of these functions, and that's to remember sap lem. So whenever I try to remember these functions, I try to imagine a tree and there's sort of sap dripping from the tree, and that helps me remember sap lem. So um, let's take a look at these statistical functions. Okay, so we've used quite a fair few different functions there. So remember SAP LEM. So it's S-A-P-L-E-M-M. -M. Oh, we haven't actually applied a function there. So this helps you remember each one of these functions here. So first up, we've got square root. And again, we're calculating the square root of 25, which is 5. We're also using np.abs to basically get the absolute value. So we've converted our negative 2 to 2. We're able to use power to calculate a power. So in this case, it's 2 to the power of 7. We can calculate the logarithm. So again, we're taking 25 and applying a log function. We can also use the np.exp to create an exponential. And again, we're now calculating our exponential on 2 and 3. And we can also grab our minimum and our maximum using the np.min and np.max functions. So that covers applying some functions to our different arrays. Now, what happens if we actually wanted to update a value within an array? So if we cast our minds back to our data array, which we created right at the start, say we wanted to change this value here to 700, for example. Well, what we can actually do is access that value using the same method that we had right up here and we can actually reset that value. So right now we're getting 0.48, which is that, but what we can do is assign a new value to it. And now again, if we take a look at our data, we've now gone and updated that value. Now say we wanted to sort our data, we can also sort our data while we're at it. So again, we can just use the sort function on our array and you can see that we've now gone and sorted that. Now, sometimes when you're working with TensorFlow or when you're working with Keras, you might need to reshape your array. Well, in order to do that, you can use the reshape method to go and do that. So let's take a look at that. So if we take a look at our initial uh, data shape, you can see that we've got an array with the shape of two, three, four. Now, assume that we wanted a new array with the shape of two, two, and then we didn't care about the last value. Well, what we can do is use the reshape method there. So let's do that. And there you go. So what we basically did is we grabbed our array, we then used the reshape method and passed through the shape that we wanted. By specifying negative one, we're basically telling NumPy that we don't care what the shape of the last value is. And in this case, it's automatically calculated that it needs to be six. Now, the last thing that you might wanna do whenever you're working with NumPy arrays is append to them or insert new values. So let's take a look at how you might do that. So what we've done there is we've initially created an array. So using the np.zeros function that we set up right at the start within our create section, and we specified that we wanted eight different values in there. So in this case, what we've got is we've got eight different zeros. Now, say we wanted to add some values to it. So we wanted to add a three and a four. Well, what we can do is use the np.append method, pass through our initial array, and then pass through what we want to append to it, and you can see that by doing that, we've then gone and appended a three and a four to our initial zeros array. Now that appends to the end. Say for example, we wanted to insert some values in a really specific place. Well, rather than using np.append, we can use np.insert to insert a value at a specific area. So what we've done is we've used the np.insert method. We've passed through our initial array We've then specified the position that we want to insert our value. So in this case, we've specified position two, so zero, one, two, and then we've included the value that we actually wanted to insert. So in this case, we inserted a number one and then we printed it out. So basically you can see there that by using the append method, we're going to add a value to the end and by using the np.insert method, we're going to insert a value where we want it to be. And that about wraps up our update section. So what we did is a whole bunch of stuff. So we went through our basic math functions, so add, subtract, divide, multiply, and dot. 
We then also took a look at our statistical functions or slightly more advanced mathematical functions. And to remember that, you just need to remember sap lem. So imagine sap dripping from a tree. And this covers square root, absolute power, log, exp, min, and max. We then also updated a value within an array. We sorted, we reshaped, and we also appended values and inserted new values. Now, the last thing that we want to take a look at is our delete section. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to delete a segment of an array and we're also going to export our array out so that we can use it later on. So let's initially take a look at our data. And say, for example, we wanted to delete the first array within each one of these arrays. So in this case, you can see that each one of the, our subarrays contains two arrays. Say we wanted to delete the first one. Well, what we can do is use the mp.delete function to do that. And there you go. So what we've actually gone and done there is we've deleted this and we've also deleted this. So the np.delete function allows you to delete different segments of arrays. So in order to do that, we pass through our array or our NumPy array. We then specified which level of array we want to delete and we pass through access equals one because we're specifying that we want to delete a row, not a column. Now, the next thing that we actually want to do is save our arrays. Well, we can do that using the np.save function. So we've now gone and saved away our array and you can see that it's gone and saved as new array.npy. And again, this is going to save in the same directory that your Jupyter notebook is in, unless you specify otherwise. Now, if we wanted to reload that array, well, what we can do is do that using the np.load function. And you can see that we've now gone and reloaded it from memory. So within our delete section, we've gone through how to delete different segments of arrays how to save them down as well as how to load them up. And that about wraps up this video. So what we went through is quite a fair bit. So we took a look at how to install NumPy, how to import it, how to create a random array, create an array filled with zeros, fools, and ones. We also took a look at the different attributes that we can grab from our arrays as well as how to slice. Then within our update section, we covered our basic math and stat functions as well as how to update values sort, insert, and append. And last but not least, we took a look at how to delete values out of our arrays and save them down to memory. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and tick that bell so you get notified of any future videos. And let me know in the comments below what you're using NumPy for. Thanks again for tuning in. Peace.